9.3. Um, just uh, some things about 9.3 and 9.4. So it, it the book does something weird. So we started talking about the unit circle, then all of a sudden we jump into graphs, which makes sense um, because the unit circle helps kind of make these graphs. Um, you can do a video, uh, you know, just search like a quick uh, Google search where it says um, unit circle and sign graph and it'll show you like a little video of how the unit circle helps design and make um the graphs of sines and cosines and things like that um so yeah you could do a quick search of that and, and see that in google um so i get why they kind of put it here but nevertheless it, i mean it's kind of a break in things um, because when we jump back into nine five it's like we do nine two over again so i really think nine two really connects better with nine five and should have went in that order but i'm not the writer of this book just to kind of give you a heads up so nine three and nine four are all about graphs nine three i'm going to give you the basics on everything and then nine four will be nice and quick because all we're going to do is change up the picture of the graph so if you remember back in college algebra when we talked about um transformations of functions okay and it didn't matter what kind of function it was just transformations of functions remember we had an a a b a c and a d okay back in college algebra and they each controlled some sort of aspect well we're going to talk about all those today and we're going to gear it towards nothing but trig functions so signs cosines, secants, cosecants, tangents, cotangents, okay? So 9.3 for us, thankfully, it's going to focus in on just sines and cosines. But I wanted to show you um, the basic transformation equation of what these functions look like. So here it is. So hopefully that up here kind of looks familiar usually we took the c and we put it outside over here and i think we also called cd and then the c part with but here either way this is kind of the basic piece of it this is what our book kind of uses okay so the part that used to be out here that i think was plus d when we had it we now put it in front okay um so here's the basic piece and again a, B, C, and D all control certain aspects of this function. And we're going to talk about that. Um, so all that happens when we want to change the graph is we change the word sine to cosine. Or we put in tangent or cotangent or secant or cosecant. Okay, These all have the same layout as what you're seeing here. But again, all we're going to focus in on are those two right there. Okay, when we get to three, four, we'll talk about these other two, but again, or not other two, other four. But again, all that's going to happen with these is these variables are going to do the same thing. We're just changing what the picture looks like. So that's why uh, nine, four is going to go pretty fast. Okay, because all that's happening is these C's, A's, B's and D's still do their same job. This is just a different picture and you adjust it accordingly. Okay. So let's go ahead and start talking about graphing these because that's what this whole thing's about. And then I will um, show you some things in here that are going to happen on your guys' assignment. Um, just ca also kind of a, a heads up on this. I would not do the graphing in Canvas. I would actually go out to the My Lab and Mastering and open up that assignment from the actual my math lab side just because the graph uh, graphing in canvas it, it's not the best it squishes and shrinks your graph down again those of you that had me in college algebra i kind of talked about you know graphing in, in canvas it, it, it's just ugly and it makes your graph really really small and hard to read it's so much easier to come out here and work on that information so if we click on assignments and go out here to nine three we'll be able to talk about some of these problems. So let's just 
Uh, let's pick question 11. See if this is the one that I want to work with maybe later on. Thinking about life. No, that's not it. Let's see here. Give it just a moment. Yeah, we can work with it because this says graph the function. And we'll come back and talk about this guy and, and how we can graph that function. All right. So back to our stuff. We need to know what A, B, C, and D do. Okay. So let's start talking about it. A, again, out here, I have given you some notes. Right above our video in Canvas, there is... There's going to be a page for notes, so I don't think I put it out here yet, but when you go into your modules, okay, and you click on learn chapter two, or sorry, learn chapter nine. Again, I don't think I put this out here. No, I haven't. But right above here, there's going to be a thing that says sine and cosine graphs. And then right above here, it, there will be a set of notes that says cosecant, secant, tangent, cotangent graphs. Okay. So this is what that page will look like. So here are pictures of what those graphs look like. These are the um, original functions. Okay. These are the original functions. And down here at the bottom, I give you all that different information that are going to do some things like about horizontal shifts, vertical shifts, periods, amplitudes, things like that, because that's what our A, B, C's and D's are controlling. So over here, I asked you about A. What does A control? Okay. So again, we're talking about this guy right here. We'll, we'll put that in red. So what is A controlling for us? Okay. A controls what we call the amplitude. So amplitude is talking about how high these peaks and valleys are. A normal amplitude when A is 1, or in other words, when you do not see the A in your function, that means A is 1. Notice that the peak goes up to 1 and down to a negative 1. Okay, notice when your A is 1 here, a normal amplitude is up at a positive 1 and down at a negative 1. Okay, so A controls what I just talked about, the amplitude. Okay, so it talks about the highest and the lowest of the points of your graph. That's what A is going to control. So, amplitude is basically the peaks and the valleys. That's what we're talking about here. Peaks and valleys. Mm, I don't think it's IES. I think it's just peaks and valleys. I'm not an English teacher, so we'll just go with that. All right. So whatever A is. That's going to tell you how high it's going to go, how low it's going to go. So if A is 2, that means those peaks will go up to 2 and down to a negative 2. If your A is 5, that means those peaks and valley, valleys, the curve will go up to a 5, down to a negative 5. It's the height of the wave. That's another way to think about um, your amplitude there. It's like the height of a wave. You're going to go up you're going to go down. Okay. Now, so it controls amplitude, but it also controls one other piece. This also controls reflection. Over the X axis. Okay. So if you have a positive A, that means there is no reflection.
So that means when you're looking at this, if it is a positive A, your graphs for sine will go up first and then down. Cosine will start up at the amplitude and then move down and then back up to the amplitude. Okay? Notice sine starts at the origin. So when you're thinking about these graphs, you got to be very, very careful. Make sure that you know where they start. Sine always starts at the origin or on the axis. Sorry, I didn't mean to select all this stuff. All right, whatever. So sine always starts at the origin and then moves up and then moves down. Cosine always starts at the amplitude and moves down. So when your A is positive, it's going to follow these. If your A is a negative A, then that means you're going to reflect. Over the x-axis. Oops. Okay. So that means if I'm reflecting over the x-axis, sine still starts at the origin, but it will move down first and then back up. Okay. So that's a reflection over the x-axis. The, the, instead of going up, then down, sine will go down, then up. Okay. Cosine, instead of starting at the positive amplitude, it'll start at the negative amplitude. So a reflection over the x-axis will start down at negative one and then go up and then back down. Okay. So that's what A controls. Controls the heights of these waves. The amplitude is what we call it. And it controls whether it is um, reflecting or not reflecting. These are what they look like when they do not reflect. Okay? There we go. All right. Oh, man. I don't know how I did that either. Oh, well. Okay. So let's jump back. Let's take a look. And let me show you how I do my graphs. I do my graphs, uh, I mean, kind of like sketches. Okay? So... When I sketch, I only care about five points. I care about the beginning, the amplitudes, when we hit the axis again, the amplitude, and when we hit the axis again. Or in the case of cosine, it's the amplitude, the axis, the amplitude, the axis, the amplitude. Okay? I only care about five points. Notice I don't do a lot of stuff. So let's start talking about how I do these graphs, okay? So, first off, let's talk about A. So here's A, okay? So A is eight. What does that tell us? Well, one, it's positive. So that means there's no reflection. So that's good. Two. Because it's eight, that means my amplitude is going to be eight. So that means the highest I go is a positive eight. The lowest I go is a negative eight. Look how I did that. Okay, I didn't count up eight. I didn't count down eight. I just put what my amplitudes were. Okay, it's very, very simple. And then now, just pay attention to your function. Our function is sine. So, our sine graph, the only thing that changed on it is just how high our waves are. So, our waves go up to 8 and down to 8. So, all I'm going to do is repeat this information along the x-axis because I didn't change any of this information. This information is what we call the period. We're going to talk about that soon enough. Um, but for right now, don't worry about the period yet, okay? Just know that it's going to follow this information. It's going to go to pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and then 2 pi over 2, okay? It's going to follow that same information. So I haven't changed the x-axis. All I did was change the height. So we're going to go to pi over 2, 
pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. That's going to stay the way it is. And then now we can do our five points. Okay, sine starts at the origin. And because we're not reflecting, that means we're going to go up first. So that means the next point is up at the amplitude. The next point is down at the axis. The next point goes down to the amplitude. And then the th last point, the fifth one, is back at the axis. Okay? Because we didn't reflect. So it has to go up first, then down. And then all you do is connect your dots. Connect the dots. Make them wavy. Whee! There we go. There's the sine graph. And that's all I do. Okay? What's cool about your assignment is sometimes they're just going to be multiple choice. So find a graph that kind of looks like this, where it goes up to the 8, down to a negative 8. It starts at 0 and goes to 2 pi. Okay? So some of your graphs are going to be multiple choice. Sometimes you'll have to put in information, which is what I have right here on this. We'll talk about this problem and how it works in your assignment and all that stuff soon enough here in just a couple minutes, okay? That's amplitude. That's what A controls. Try it again. Go. Okay. So, start my graph. So again, here's our A. And we're dealing with cosine too, so that's important to know. So A is equal to um, negative 3, but I don't think I put that over here. Oh, yeah, I did. A is equal to negative 3. So because it is negative, that means we're going to reflect over the x-axis. Okay? So cosine generally starts up at the amplitude and then goes down. That blue is annoying me. Sorry. Come on. There we go. So it starts up at the amplitude and then goes down and then goes back up. But because this is a reflection, that means it's going to start down first and then go up. Okay. So what is the amplitude? Well, you ignore the sign because that sign was only to tell you that, hey, this is going to reflect. So the amplitude is 3. That means the highest will go is 3. The lowest will go is a negative 3. Okay? And because we're not changing the period, so it's going to do the same thing sign did. We haven't changed the period. Again, we'll talk about the period soon enough. Okay? That's what the P stands for. P for period. So normal sine graphs and cosine graphs have a period of 2 pi before it starts repeating. Again, we'll talk about it here, here in a couple minutes. So my cosine graph is going to go through pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. All that stays the same, just like what happened with the sine graph. Okay, so we got pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. And then now we make our points. So because we reflected, that means um, we start, we're going to flip it. And cosine, remember, it starts on the amplitude. Sine would have started on the x-axis at the origin. So we start at the amplitude. Our next point is going to hit pi over 2. And then we're going to come up and hit the amplitude. And then we're going to hit 3 pi over 2. And then we're going to come down and hit the bottom amplitude. And so again, all we do is just connect the dots, make it curvy. Connect the dots, la, 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 la. And I can't see the last point close enough. There we go. And there's the graph of this. Okay, nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. Okay? All right, so that's A. Let's talk about B. B controls the period. Okay, and out here I've given you a formula for that. Okay, right here. Period. P equals 2 pi divided by B. Okay. 
because the period for both of these is 2 pi. Starts at 0 and goes to 2 pi. What a period means is how long is it before it starts repeating itself? Okay? How long is it before it starts repeating yourself? Repeating. Let me show you an example of this. <clears throat> oh, let me change my mode. That is definitely not the mode we want to be in. We'll talk about that later on when we get to chapter 11. But right now, we don't need that. All right. So let's just put sine x in here. Okay? And then I'm going to do some things, but this is just for me so that I can show you um, what I mean by period. So I'm going to change the minimum. Well, let's see here. Uh, X minimum, we're going to make that zero. The X maximum, I'm going to make that four pi. And we're going to count by a scale of pi over two. Okay, the Y minimum, um, I'm going to have that be negative two. The maximum be a positive two. I'll just count that by one. So here we go. Uh, that's not right. Did I put something in wrong? Sine x. Uh, weird. Zero. Four pi. That should have graphed differently what the well that's really weird because it should not look like a line okay let me try something real quick so we got this zoom trig let's hit it well there we go well, what did i do wrong Huh. Oh, because I'm, oh, 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 my mode. I'm in radi, I'm in degrees. Now I get it. So let's do this. It wasn't understanding what I was putting in. Okay. Um, let's call this four pi. I get what happened. You will not have to w worry about this because hopefully your calculator is in radians. If you're graphing, put your calculator in radians just to let you know. Put the calculator in radians. So like what I did, go into mode, come down here, make sure you're in radians. That's important. So we're in the window. Um, I need the scale to be pi divided by 2. And I'll make this negative two and a positive two. There we go. There it is. That's what I was looking for a moment ago. So you see how from zero to two pi, that's an up and a down. And then after two pi, it repeats. That's what we mean by period. The period is how long it takes for one graph to happen before it starts repeating. So sine graphs repeat every two pi. Okay. If you look at cosine, just come right in here, change it out, cosine. Cosines, it takes a period of 2 pi before it starts repeating again, because this is 0, and that was 2 pi. Okay? So that's what it means to be a period. And B, what the B does for us, it affects that. So B messes with the period. Let's call this green. And there's a formula. If you want to know the period of your function, you're going to take 2 pi, because that's how long it takes these functions to work, and divide it by b. When you take 2 pi divided by b, that tells you your new period. Okay? Now, b does control one other piece. B controls reflection over the y-axis, but I will just let you know, um, there will be no reflection over the y-axis, okay? 
and that would mean that you would have a negative B if you were going to reflect. We're never going to have a negative B in here, okay? Because it's too hard to tell whether it was a, a true reflection or, you know, whether it was really a reflection or not over the y-axis, okay, with some of these functions because they look just like the original. So we're not going to worry about reflecting over the y-axis. The only thing that you have to worry about if there's a reflection is with A, okay? So with B, we're just going to focus in on changing the period. But I wanted you to know B does control reflections over the y-axis but you're never gonna have to worry about that. All right, so B is just controlling the period. All right, <clears throat> excuse me. So let's talk about B. So you can see that our A here is still one and it's positive. So we're not gonna mess with the A right now. We're only gonna mess with B, okay? So that means there is no reflection and the highest we will go, the amplitude, the highest you will go is a positive one. And the lowest you will go is a negative one. So the highest will go is one. The lowest will go is negative one. Notice that we are also sine. Okay, so that means we're going to start on the x-axis. But what we have messed with is the period. So our period, because B is not one anymore, our period has now changed. It has either gotten longer or it has gotten shorter. Okay? That's what B does. It makes it it makes the period either last longer, it takes longer before it repeats, or it's shorter. Okay? So how we figure out the new period? Well, we're going to take 2 pi divided by 7. Okay? And you're going to reduce this. And you need to keep the period in radians. Do not change that to degrees because in a graph, it doesn't make any sense to be in degrees, as you saw when I was looking at the calculator. So this right here does not reduce. This is the actual period of our graph. It is shorter now. In other words, it will repeat itself faster than before. So that means our graph comes out here and will end at 2 pi over 7 before it starts repeating. What we have to figure out now are what are the new marks between here to help us get the graph. So let me talk to you about that. All you're going to do to find these three marks, it's all about a midpoint. Okay? So the first thing is we're going to find the exact middle between in our period. Okay. When you want to find the midpoint, just so you know, all you're going to do is take the large number plus the small number and divide it by two. That's how you find the midpoint, the middle. So we want to find this one first. So we want to find the exact middle. Oops, I should have probably put that in black. That's the first thing you're going to find. So our large number is 2 pi over 7. So we're going to find the exact middle. So our large number is 2 pi over 7. Our small number is 0. And then we're going to divide this answer by 2. Go to your calculator. Let it do the work with the fractions. Okay? Just leave pi where it is. So this is one thing in the calculator. Do not put pi in the calculator. Just let the calculator deal with the fraction. Okay? So if we come out here. And we say, so we've got a fraction, alpha, oops, sorry, alpha, let's get out of this, alpha y equals, so we got a fraction, and on top there's a fraction, which is 2 over 7, 
Again, we leave the pi out of this. And we're adding zero to that. And then we're taking all that divided by two. Hit enter. There's our new fraction. That's the middle. So the middle is one pi over seven, or just pi over seven, because I don't put the one in. Okay? And then now all you're going to do is repeat that process to find the middle here and the middle there. Okay? So you're going to find the other two middles. So I usually call that the small middle. And then we'll find the large middle. So I'm calling this guy the small middle, this one the large middle. Okay? But all this is is midpoints. So if I want to find the small middle, all I'm going to do is take my large number, which is pi over 7 now, plus 0, that's the small number, and divide by 2. Because I'm finding the middle between these two. So here's the large number. Here's the small number. So you go to your calculator. You type it all in. I've shown you how to do that. So you'll be taking 1 7 plus 0 divided by 2. This will give you pi over 14. Or 1 14th in the calculator. So this guy is pi over 14. And then to find the large middle, we're going to take the large number, which is 2 pi over 7. We're going to add that with the small number, which is pi over 7. And we're going to divide that by 2. So you're taking 2 sevenths plus 1 seventh and dividing it by 2. And that's going to give you 3 pi over 14. Because again, this was the large number. This was the small number for this midpoint. And now you have the new pieces. All we got to do is graph our function now. So our period is much shorter. Okay, this is happening faster because this is no longer all the way out here at 2 pi. Okay, so again, to find these marks that we need, all we are doing is running the midpoint. Okay, and since um, we, we don't have any C's or D's, which we'll talk about that, this period right here represents the end mark. Okay, as long as we're not moving left or right, this period represents the end mark, just like what you saw on here. This period represented the end mark because we didn't move left or right. We'll get to moving left or right. That's the pain in the butt part when we start moving left and right. I hate and what we call horizontal shifts or what the book will call phase shifts. We'll talk about that soon enough. Right now, don't worry about it. Okay. So. All we did was make the graph shorter or longer. In our case, we made it shorter. So let's graph. So we're not going over the x-axis. We've already got our amplitudes. All you have to do is remember how to draw sine graphs. So sine graphs start at the origin or on the axis. Then they go up. Then they go back to the axis. Then they go down. And then they go back up to the axis. And there you go. Basically, if you haven't caught on, I'm taking this graph right here and adjusting the numbers to fit this picture. That's all I'm doing. Okay? All I'm doing is adjusting the amplitudes and adjusting these numbers according to what A and B are telling me to do. I'm not really redrawing this entire graph. I'm just adjusting the numbers. That's what's going on here. Okay? All right. So, just like last time, your turn. Go. Okay. So, again, 
the A here is 1. So we already know that there is no reflection. The amplitude is going to go up to a positive 1 and down to a negative 1. Okay. We got cosine here. Did I mark a 1 over on here? Nope. So we got cosine here. I'm going to go ahead and put this stuff in there. So there's your A. I've circled the B. I should probably have done that on this one. There's our A. There's the B. So we know what B is. B is equal to a half. Did I do that over here? Yeah, I want to be consistent. So that means our period has changed. So to find the period, cosine's original period is 2 pi. And we're going to divide that by a half. So if you go to the calculator and do the division, you find out that the period has actually expanded this time. It's gotten longer. Okay. So it now takes a distance of 4 pi before it repeats. Okay. So again, we're not moving left and right. So we know that it's going to start at 0. And our n value is 4 pi. Okay, so what we need to do, oh, I didn't even mark this. We know that it's going to go up to, hey, 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 we want red there. Let's undo that. Red, red. We know it's going to go up to a one and down to, a, uh, up to a positive one, down to a negative one. So all we need to do now is find the midpoints. And I should have adjusted that. So this is a midpoint and we got there and there. So we need to find those three lines. So again, we're going to start in the middle, find the exact middle, and then we'll find the small middle and then the large middle. Okay. So the exact middle, I'm just going to abbreviate these. Let's do this. So EM for exact middle. Okay. So our large number is pi over 4, our small number is 0, and then we're going to divide that by 2. Hopefully you can do this in your head and find out that the exact middle is 2 pi. To find the small middle, we'll take our large number, which is 2 pi, plus our small number, which is 0. Divide by 2, and hopefully, again, you find out that is pi, or 1 pi, however you want to do it. I don't know why I put it in there. I'm crazy. Pi. There we go. All right. And it should be no surprise. Hopefully, you can kind of see the pattern going on here. This is 3 pi. But again, let's verify that so I can show you that. Okay. So to find the large middle, we're going to take our large number, which is 4 pi, plus our small number, which is 2 pi, and then divide that by 2. 4 pi, 4 pi, 4 pi plus 2 pi is 6 pi divided by 2, like I said, 3 pi. So there are your marks. Okay. And then now know that we're dealing with cosine. So remember, cosine starts, what colors did I use? Or I did red. All right. So cosine starts at the amplitude. And since we're not reflecting, that means it starts up above at the top. And then it goes down to the axis, then down to the bottom amplitude, then back up to the axis, and then up to the top amplitude. And all we do is we make it curvy. So again, just like what I showed you on the paper, all I did was change the amplitudes and these numbers to match what is going on. This picture stayed the same. I'm just changing what's going on down here. And if you look at this, technically this thing is now longer because the original cosine would have been between here. So the cosine now has gotten longer because it goes out to 4 pi before it starts repeating. Okay? Okay. I think I got, okay, good. Now try this one on your own. I've given you a new A, and I've actually messed with B. So now we're going to put it together. Give it a shot. Go. Okay. So we're 
So you notice that A is a negative 2. So that means we're going to reflect over the x-axis. It also means that the amplitude is 2. So that's our A. We are dealing with sine, okay? So 2 and negative 2. So remember, sine originally starts at the origin, goes up, then down. Since we're reflecting, we're going to start at the origin and go down, then up. So keep that in mind. So that's what the A is doing now. Now let's talk about B. B is right here. So B is 2. So that's changing our period. So sine's graph has a period of 2 pi. And we're going to divide that by 2. So that means our graph is now a period of pi. And because we're not moving left and right, our end mark is pi. Okay, all we have to do is find the midpoints. Okay, so our graph is actually shorter. It's taking less time to repeat than what it normally is. Okay, so if you found the midpoints, which weren't too bad, so if you found the exact midpoint, all you had to do was take pi plus 0 divided by 2, and you should end up with pi over 2. That's the middle. The small midpoint, you'll take pi over 2 plus 0 divided by 2. Hopefully you found out that that was pi over 4. <clears throat> then we will take the large middle which is pi plus pi over 2 divided by 2. And that gives us 3 pi over 4. So now that we have all the information, we're ready to graph. I don't know why I put 3 pi over 3. Let's fix that. There we go. Okay. So sine starts on the axis and because we're reflecting we're going down first remember i talked about that so we go down then back to the axis then we go up then back to the axis draw in your curvies up and down knees and there you go there's the graph see nothing crazy it's not that bad not that bad especially when it's just a and b and then we get to D. D is the one that is the vein of my existence. D is the one that moves us left and right. This is the horizontal shift. Or as our book would call it, they actually call this the phase shift. Okay? The phase shift. Which, in other words, phase shift is just horizontal God this looks horrible let's fix that horizontal toll not t or tat horizontat horizontal shift moving left and right that's what d controls moving to the left moving to the right Okay, so over here, I did give you some information about it, horizontal. In the formula, it says that it is X minus D, okay? So X minus D. So what's really cool is we're going to use this to help us figure out that phase shift, okay? And this will tell us what's really going on, okay? But the D value in here, please know that because in here it says that it is X minus D, the real D value is the opposite of what's going on here. Okay? So if it says X minus 2, the real D value is a positive 2. 
okay? If it says x plus 7, the real d value would have been a negative 7, okay? But we're going to use this to actually help us out because when we're moving left or right in a phase shift, if we solve this piece right here, it will tell us the beginning point and the end point. And then all we have to do is find the other tick marks using midpoints. Okay? So we'll get to this here in just a second. All right? So when we do this, this controls left and right. So when you're looking at the D, think opposite of the value. So if you see parenthesis x minus 2, d is really a positive 2. If you see x plus 7, the real d value is a negative 7 because in the original piece here, it looks like x minus D. Okay? So what this D is saying, we're going to be shifting, if it looks like minus 2, that means it's going to be shifting to the right 2. It's opposite. If it looks like plus 7, that means we're really going to be shifting to the left 7. Okay? And so we will use this to help us figure this stuff out. We will solve this little compound inequality. This is what's going to help us find the beginning and ending points. Okay? So like here, the beginning point was zero, the ending point was pi, because we didn't move left or right. Because this guy had originally this kind of period. But when we move left and right, that changes this. Okay? All right. So let's take a look. So right now, we're just going to mess with D. So these next two examples, we're just going to mess with D. Okay? Well, actually, in this example, we'll mess with B at the same time, too. But we'll talk about that. All right. So let's talk about D. So right here is D. Okay? So that means our D is equal to a positive pi over 3. That means we are going to be moving to the right, pi over 3. So all these original points up here, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, are moving this direction, pi over 3. Okay? I don't, actually, is it cosine? Nope, it's sine. So, But it's the same thing up here. All these points are shifting to the right, pi over 3. Okay, oops, I don't know why I clicked on that. So, we're going to solve 0 less than or equal to, we're going to put this part in there, there's no b to worry about, pi over 3, x minus pi over 3, less than or equal to 2 pi, because that's the original period, 0 to 2 pi. All right, so how do we solve this? Well, we get rid of a minus pi over 3 by adding pi over 3, which makes sense because we're going to be moving to the right pi over 3, and that's like adding when you move to the right. So what we have is 0 plus pi over 3 is, oops, not 0, silly me, pi over 3 less than or equal to x less than or equal to, because the pi's over 3 is canceled out. And then this gives us, oh, 7 pi over 3. So again, you just go to your calculator and you take 2 plus 1 third. Okay? So that's 7 pi over 3. 
So right here, this represents the beginning and the end of my graph. So if I'm drawing, my first tick mark here is pi over 3. My last tick mark here is 7 pi over 3. Okay? My first tick mark is pi over 3. My last tick mark is 7 pi over 3. Okay? So now let's start talking about everybody else. Now I could have talked about A in the beginning. A is really 1. It's right here. Okay? So that means the amplitude is up at a positive 1. And down here, it goes to a negative 1. My B is technically right here. There is a 1, and then there's a parenthesis, an actual another parenthesis around all that. There should be. But we just don't show it because B is 1. So since B is 1, the period has not changed. The period is still 2 pi. Because if you take 2 pi divided by 1, it's still 2 pi. And this distance here represents a length of 2 pi. It's good. Okay? So, now, now that we have the beginning, now that we have the end, we can find those midpoints, just like what we did with B. So, we've got a middle, we've got a point right here, and a point right there. Okay? So let's find these midpoints. So to find the exact middle, take your large number, which is 7 pi over 3, plus your small number, which is pi over 3. See how this little guy has helped us out? This gives us the large number and the small number. That's what it's going to tell you. The beginning of your graph, the end of your graph before it repeats. So this is the large number, or actually, let's change this up. This is the end point. This is the beginning point. Okay. So we're going to take all this and divide it by Okay, so we're going to take 7 thirds plus 1 third and then divide by 2. So off the top of my head, I cannot do that. So we've got a fraction and then fractions on the top. So 7 thirds plus alpha y equals 1 third all divided by 2. 4 thirds. So that gives us 4 pi over 3. So there's the middle. Okay. Find the small point, the small mid, the small middle, as, as I say. We'll take 4 pi over 3 plus pi over 3. Divide that by 2. So that gives us 4 thirds plus 1 third divided by 2. So I'm just going to come back up here and grab this guy. And all I got to do is change this 7 to a 4. Oh no. 7 to a 4. 4 thirds plus 1 third. There we go. 5 pi over 6. There's the small middle. Okay. And then to find the large middle, all we're going to do is take the 7 thirds plus the 4 thirds. Come on, you expand. There we go. So the large middle, 7 pi over 3 plus 4 pi over 3 divided by. And that 
will give us, again, I can just come right back up here. I can grab this beginning guy. All I got to do is change the 1 to a 4. I love this calculator. Oops. There we go. Scroll up. Change that to a 4. Boom. So 11 pi over 6. There's our large middle. 11 pi over 6. Let's make that not look so much like a 4. There we go. Okay. So there's the large middle. And all we're going to do is put our graph on this now. So it is a sine graph. So we start on the axis. And because it's not reflecting, it'll go up and then down. So we're going to start at pi over 3. Then we'll go up to 1, back down, all the way to the bottom at negative 1, and then back up. There's the graph. This is as hard as pretty much what it's going to get. D is the one that gives us the most trouble. Okay? D is the one that gives us the most trouble. It's a pain in the butakis because it's moving us left and right. I don't mind the B so much, but D moving left and right, those phase shifts, eh, pain. Okay? What's really cool about your assignment is you're actually not going to have to physically draw these by hand. You're just putting in a lot of information for them. Okay, which again, I'm going to show you how we put that information in. So graphing for you on the My Math Lab is so much easier. Okay, but I wanted to teach you how to do this by hand because I mean this is really what's going on. This is you know this is how you get these graphs. Okay, and again, just like what I told you, all I'm doing is really just changing this information, the x-axis and the y-axis. The graph still stays the same. I'm just changing the numbers making it fit to what I want it to fit, okay? So let's talk about this one together. I think I have another one. Nope, I actually jumped right into C. So let's talk about this one together because this is a little different. So again, we still have the A here, okay? So we know that A is 1, so that means the amplitude is 1. So it'll go up to 1, down to, one, down to negative 1. We're not going to reflect, so we're going to kind of keep it simple. But let's talk about this piece right here. Um, because most of you will probably be like, okay, Mr. Armstrong, that means the period, or our B is 2, and our D is this part right there. And you're kind of partially correct. If you look back at our formula, I'm going to scroll all the way back to the beginning. Our formula has B in front of a parenthesis and D inside a parenthesis. Okay? If we go back to this problem, that's not what's going on. There's no parenthesis in here. So I need to give you a little bit of a warning that if inside your function here there's no parenthesis and there's a number in front of your x, you got to be careful here. Note, sometimes you have to pull A, G, C, F out. So if you have a B and a D, you need to make sure that it looks like the form B parenthesis X minus D. It has to look like this. So in our case up here, the GCF that you pull out is always the number that's by X. Pull out the number by x, okay? So we're going to pull a 2 out. So let me actually rewrite this. Let's put this actually in text. So y equals cosine parenthesis. I'm going to pull a 2 out, and now we have to see what's left inside. So remember, when you pull a GCF of a 2 out, all we're doing is dividing. So I'm going to take pi over 4 
divided by 2 because I'm pulling the GCF of 2 out. Okay? I'm pulling this guy out. So if you take pi over 4 divided by 2, that gives you pi over 8. Okay? That is what's really going on there. Okay? You get pi over 8 inside there. So let me come down here, do a little bit of fancy maneuvering. That's what this problem really looks like. Okay? And let's group that stuff together. It's a little bit harder to get this. I'd have to do a lot of rewriting. I don't really want to do that to save time. So now you truly know what your B, which is 2, and your D are. That's very, very important. Okay? And actually, I should circle all this. This is what's going to help us find out what D is. Okay? So if it is not written of the form B parenthesis X minus D parenthesis, you have to pull a GCF out. And the, the number that you pull out is the number that's in front of X. Okay? So now we can talk about B. So we know B is 2. So that means our period has changed. So our period is equal to 2 pi divided by 2, which gives us pi okay so our period has changed this is now a length of pi so it's shorter before it repeats we can also talk about d since this says plus pi over 8 that means there is a phase shift the real d is a negative pi over 8 see how i said that this this right up here is not the real d the real D is actually this guy, but of course, again, think the opposite, okay? So that means we are actually moving to the left pi over 8, okay? We are moving to the left pi over 8. All right, so now that we know everybody, let's start to do some work. So remember how we did this a second ago where it was 0 less than x less than or equal to pi over or 2 pi but remember that's when we didn't change the period so because our period has now changed that changes this n number okay so this piece right here that you saw down here this is based off of a period of 2 pi so whenever the period changes this guy changes to whatever 2 pi divided by b is, okay? So this now becomes 0 less than or equal to b parenthesis x minus d parenthesis less than or equal to pi because the period has changed, okay? So this is what our new period is like. So if we plug in what we know, we are actually solving this, 2, parenthesis, oh, or actually you've taken care of the 2 because that was the B, we're actually just solving, let me go back and explain, sorry, I'm totally going to confuse you right now. Um, so what's cool about this formula when you solve this is this will... Uh, fix the period, and also do the phase shift for you. So when we solve all this, um, you'll get the beginning and the end point like normal. So if you go back and solve this, you'll get all that information we kind of just talked about. So don't worry about what I just said a second ago. I, I'm sorry that I just confused you. That was my fault. Um, we still need to solve this the way it is normally. Okay, And this will take care of any period and phase shifting when you solve this, I promise you. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to confuse you. So we're going to take and we're going to plug in what we know here. 0 less than or equal to 2 parenthesis x plus pi over 8 less than or equal to 2 pi. Because that's the original period for all of this. So how do I get rid of the 2 and the parenthesis here? Well, we're just going to divide everybody by 2. 
So this is what I was talking about a second ago. Um, when we divide by two, that's the same thing that we did up here in the, the green. So we're actually adjusting this compound inequality, and you can see that, oh, the real period for this is zero to pi. So that's what we took care of in the green right here. So these, this blue step and this step right here that we did in green are actually the same. Notice the real period of our function, which is cosine, is zero to pi, which verifies that. And then now we'll take care of the phase shift. Remember, everything's got to move to the left, pi over 8. Well, how do I get rid of a positive pi over 8? Subtract pi over 8. So our graph is going to start at a negative pi over 8. And it will end at a positive 7 pi over 8. <clears throat> okay, so now when I make my graph, I need a little bit on the negative side because my graph is going to start right here at a negative pi over 8. And it will end over here at a positive 7 pi over 8. Okay? And then, of course, we're going to find our middles. And then this middle, it might be the x-axis, or it might be the y-axis. It might not. So I'm going to put a green mark here. It's going to be probably one of these two, just so you know. Or that green mark could very well be over here on the negative side. Okay? So that this middle down here could be here on the negative. It could be the y-axis. It could be right here. We'll figure that out when we figure out the small middle. Okay, so this little mark right here is kind of in question right now. <clears throat> it could be on the positive side. It could be the y-axis. It could be on the negative side. We just don't know yet until we actually figure out the small middle. Okay, so just keep that in mind. All right, so let's figure out these marks here. Oh, and we also already know our amplitude. Our amplitude is up here at a positive one. Our amplitude is down here at a negative one. So we know that. All right, so you figure out your middles the same way. So if I want the, ex excuse me, the exact middle, I'm going to take 7 pi over 8 plus a negative pi over 8. And then I'm going to take and divide that answer by 2. So I'm going to take 7 eighths plus negative 1 eighth divided by 2. <clears throat> so... Alpha y equals, we got a fraction. Up in the top, we got another fraction. 7 over 8 plus alpha y equals negative 1 eighth all divided by 2. And that gives us 3 eighths. So our exact middle is 3 pi over 8. So let's find the small middle. So that will be 3 pi over 8 plus negative 1 pi over 8 divided by 2. So we'll go to our calculator. I'm just going to come up and grab this guy, change that 7 to a 3. Oops. Push the wrong button. There we go. 3. And we get 1 8. So we are actually on the positive side of the axis. So this guy right here is pi over 8. So it's not actually the y-axis is the middle. That's not true. It's actually pi over 8. Okay? And then last but not least, we'll do the large middle. So we'll take uh, 7 pi over 8 plus 3 pi over 8. Divide that by 2 <clears throat> equals, <clears throat> excuse me, um, oh, calculator, forgetting what I'm doing. So I'm just going to come up here and grab that beginning one and change that negative one that's right here 
to a positive three. Keep messing things up here. Delete three. And we get five eighths. There we go. So five pi over eight. And now we can make our graph. Okay. So <clears throat> this is a graph of cosine. So cosine starts at the amplitude, then moves to the axis, then the amplitude, then the axis. Okay. Then the amplitude at the end. So because we didn't reflect, that means we're going to start up. Oops. Sorry. So we're up here and then we come down. And then we come down, then we come back up, and then we're up. And there you go. Notice I didn't touch the y-axis because this is not a part of my five dots. Okay? Our tick marks here are the five dots. The y-axis, don't touch. So we go down, go back up, and there it is. That's our graph. Again, I, I don't like D, I don't like phase shifts because it, it gets really nasty on our graphs, okay? Becomes a pain in the, the booty, all right? All right, so there we go. That's a phase shift. So be careful about pulling out GCFs um, and then use this to help you figure out your beginning and your end points, okay? All right, last but not least, <clears throat> C. C is our vertical movement, our vertical shifts. Okay, it picks our graph and it moves it up and down. So this is what's going to affect the amplitudes. So D moves us left and right, which affects the period. Okay, kind of shifts that period around. <clears throat> This guy affects the up and down movement. What I generally do is notice all of these graphs right here are all about the x-axis, right? They go over the x-axis, under the x-axis, over the x-axis, under, back over. So all I do with C is I just say C is the new x-axis. That's what, this, that's what this C value represents. It's like we picked the x-axis and we, we moved it, okay? So your C value actually becomes like the new x-axis. I'll show you what I mean by that here in a moment. And C values we take as they are. So if you have a positive C in front, that means you're moving up. So a positive C, we're going to move up. A negative C, we're going to move down, okay? So if I had a positive, like if I had y equals 7, what I'm basically saying is our graph is going to move up 7. So it's like the number 7 on the y-axis becomes the new x-axis, okay? Or if I had y equal negative 3, that means our graph is going to move down 3. And in other words, the number negative 3 on the y-axis becomes the new x-axis. Okay? So let's talk about what I mean by this. So let's talk about this. <clears throat> because, again, the vertical shift, this is going to affect the amplitude, okay? This will affect the amplitude. So that's why you see an A here. So again, if you look over in here, we're not gonna mess with the period, we're not gonna mess with the phase shift, I just want you to see what the C is controlling, okay? So here you can see that A is definitely a two. So we're not gonna reflect, okay? But we do know that the amplitude <clears throat> is 2. All right. Now, 
again, I've already talked about this. There's no, the, B is one, there's no D, so we're not moving left and right. Our period stays the same, so you can talk about B being one. Okay, so that means the period is still two pi. There is no D, so D is zero. <clears throat> so there's no left and right. Okay. The default setting for D, if there is no D, it's zero. But we do have a C right here. Here's our C. Okay. So C is equal to three. That means we are moving up three. Okay. So when I draw this, I know this is going to be weird. Normally, my graph starts at the x-axis, right? But my graph has moved up three. So I'm going to call this three. And then my x-axis is really down here somewhere. Okay? This is what I mean by the C becomes like the new x-axis. So my graph is up here at three. Now, like I said, it affects the amplitude. So remember that my amplitude is two. These waves have to have a height of two. But because I moved up three, that means I need to go up two from three. So my wave will actually come up to the number five because that is an amplitude of five because three plus two is five. And my wave will come down to the number one because three minus two is one. So my amplitude is here. This is an amplitude of two. This is an amplitude of two. See how it affects it? The amplitude no longer goes up to a positive two and down to a negative two because everything has shifted up three. Okay? And since my period is still two pi, that means I begin along the y-axis. This is still the y-axis. I haven't moved away from it. I'm out here at two pi. And then you already know what the middles of these are going to be because nothing's changed. This is still pi over 2. This is still pi. This is still, come on you, 3 pi over 2. Now again, remember, this graph is up above the x-axis. Okay? I'm just making my picture that you see up here fit what I want it to do. All right? Okay. So, all we do now is put in our points. Easy peasy. So, remember that sine starts on the axis, or in our case, it's going to start on the y-axis at 3. And then sine goes up, then back to the axis, or in our case, up here at 3, then back down, and then back to the axis, or in our case, up here at 3 because three is like our quote unquote new axis. And then I make it curvy. And there's our graph. Again, all of this is up at the number three and surrounding the number three. It goes up to five, down to one, back up to three, okay? I'm just making my graph do what it needs to do according to moving up and down, okay? So C is not so bad, it's D, that really makes things a pain for us when we phase shift, all right? So I believe I've got two more examples. Nope, one more example, and we're gonna put it all together. So go ahead, pause the video, give this a shot. This is as hard as what it gets, but here in a second, I'm gonna show you what you're really gonna be doing in my math lab. Like I, like I said, for most of these, they're multiple choice, so you're gonna see which picture matches it, and you can use the calculator to help you out. Um, but you, got, you really have to know how to adjust the window if you're gonna use the calculator, just so you know. Um, or, uh, uh, you. You know, I'm showing you by hand, but I'll show you really uh, w what the other thing is going to do in the calculator because not all of them are multiple choice. Okay, so go ahead, pause the video, give this a shot, then we'll talk about my math lab. Okay, so here we go, the whole banana. So here is our A. So A is equal to 3. So that means our amplitude is three. 
And here is our C. I go ahead and deal with these two first, and then I deal with the, the other piece last because it's just a pain. So our C is negative 2, which means that we're going to go down 2. Okay? So our new x-axis is actually at negative 2. Okay? Because we went down 2. That's our new x-axis. Our amplitude was 3, so that means if I take negative 2 plus 3, I get 1. If I take negative 2 minus 3, I get negative 5. So there's the top and bottom. So that means our x-axis is somewhere, somewhere in here, but I really don't care about the x-axis, okay? I care about this information. All right, so we've adjusted the x-axis and we know how high it goes and how low it goes, up to one, down to negative five. All right, so here, notice this is not in the correct form it should be in. So we need to pull a GCF out and hopefully you see that GCF is four, which is actually our B. But let's go ahead and pull that GCF out. So 4x minus pi. We're going to pull a 4 out of that. And we're going to have x minus pi over 4. Because everybody gets divided by 4 in here when you pull that 4 out. Okay? So this is the real information that's right here. 4. Okay? And I'm going to go ahead and put this in black so I can highlight things. 4, parenthesis, x minus pi over 4, parenthesis, parenthesis. So now you know what the real b is. b is 4. So that changes the period. So the period is 2 pi, because that's the distance of cosine regularly, divided by 4. So that means our period is going to be pi halves. So it's really, really quick. All right. Now, notice here's the D. Or what it looks like. But the real D is pi over 4. That means we are moving to the right pi over 4. Okay. So we're going to come down here and do some solving. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this. I don't want this in the middle of my page. Let's move it over here. And again, we're going to solve 0 less than or equal to 4 parenthesis x minus pi over 4 parenthesis less than or equal to 2 pi. Remember, that's the part I messed up last time. I almost, I almost confused you. Hopefully, I fixed that. Um, so this is what we're going to solve. Okay? So again, how do I get rid of this 4 times this parenthesis? Divide by 4, which this is what we just did in green a second ago. This is the adjusting of the, the, pot, uh, the period. So this is still 0, less than or equal to x minus pi over 4, less than or equal to pi over 2. So again, that's the period verification that we just did a second ago in green. Now, how do I get rid of subtracting 4? Add. Or sorry, subtracting pi over 4, we add pi over 4, which is that movement of going right. So plus pi over 4, plus pi over 4. So we now know that our starting value is pi over 4, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to, and our ending value will be 3 pi over 4. There we go. So we now know our first tick mark right here. Oops. Should have been writing. Our first mark is pi over 4. Our end mark over here is 3 pi over 4. We now need to find the middle three marks, which you know how to do. Okay, so to find the exact middle, we'll just put it right here. We're going to take 3 pi over 4 plus pi over 4, divide that by 2. And when you go to your calculator, that gives you 
Uh, shoot. Uh, should be pi over 2. Yeah. So that's the exact middle there. Pi over 2. Okay. To find the small middle, you'll take uh, pi over 2. Sorry, forgetting what I'm doing here. Trying to think about some other things at the same time, too. Plus pi over 4. I'm almost grabbing the wrong numbers. And that will give you, and divide by 2. And that will give you 3 pi over 8. So there's your small middle. 3 pi over 8. And then to get the large middle, all we got to do, take 3 pi over 4 plus uh, pi over 2, divide by 2. And that should give us, oh man, right off the top of my head, uh, make sure that it is right, right? Yeah, 3 pi over 4 plus pi over 2. Oh, this one I got to go to the calculator for. My brain's not working right now. So, 3 over 4, 3 fourths, plus alpha y equals 1 half, and then all over 2. 5 eighths. So, this is 5 pi over 8. All right, and now we can make our graph. We've got everything we need. So remember, cosine starts at the amplitude. And oh, also, uh, yeah, since this is positive, we know that there is no reflection too. So we'll start up at the amplitude instead of down. So we're going to start at our first mark right here. So we're up at the amplitude. And then we're going to come down to the axis, which is actually negative 2. Then we're going to come down to the bottom amplitude. Then we're going to come back up to the axis. And then we're going to come up to the top amplitude. And there we go. Draw on your curve. Whee! And there it is. You've done it. That is graphing sines and cosines. You just got to know what A, B, C, and D do. Okay? Now, let's talk about your assignment. What's going to happen in here? So... Clicking on your assignment, we were looking at, I think it was question 12, wasn't it? I don't know where all that went, but that's all right. It probably says I'm logged out. Oh, nope. All right, so here we go. I'm just going to go ahead and fill in some stuff that I know. So my amplitude is 5. Fantastic. Um, the period has changed, which becomes 8. And then make sure that you're using their information down here. And here are some fraction keys for you. So check that. Should be 8 pi. And then it says graph. All right. So here's that graphing stuff. So when you graph, you do a couple things. You can click over here on the graph. Notice it gives you information down here. Okay. So this is the sine graph. See, it says sine tool. This is the cosine graph. So make sure that you, you select the correct one. Okay, you can either do solid or dotted lines. All these should be solid, just so you know. So your first thing is you got to make sure that you pick the correct graph. All right, so you're going to click sign because that's what we're dealing with. And then you just come up here and click on the picture. And then now it opens a screen. A couple things that can happen. Um, and all you're doing is putting the, the amplitude, the period, the... Uh, vertical shift, the phase shift, okay? Down here is the x-axis reflection, y-axis reflection. Remember I told you we are never going to reflect over the y-axis, so this should never, ever be selected. So really all you're doing it right over here is you're putting in this information that we have right over here, the A, the C, the B, and the D. Sometimes over here, just so you know, 
Sometimes they will change some of these up to slide rules where you'll slide across. Usually that happens on the amplitude and the period where they change these into slides. So they'll have like a slide up to one, two, three, or down to a negative one, negative two, negative three, things like that. Same thing for the period. They'll have this as a slide where you'll slide up to one, two, three, um, or one pi, two pi, three pi, or slide down to a, you know, things like that. So um, sometimes they change these to slide rules, okay? But all they want you to do is put in the information you know. So you know that the amplitude is five, okay? We know that the period is 8 pi. So notice when you're in here, there's no thing to press pi. So if you want to put in pi, you type pi. Okay? So if you're adjusting this and you need to put in that information, see, there it is. See, notice my graph is adjusting as we do that. Okay? So you don't actually have to graph anything by hand like what we did. We did it the hard way. But I needed you to see what was happening. Okay? And then down here, does it shift vertically? Well, no, there's no C value up here. So that's why it's zero because the default on vertical translations and phase shifts is zero. Okay. The default for amplitudes and periods is um, uh, those values uh, is one and one. So if you ever, if you don't see an A, the default is one. If you don't see a B, the default is one. Okay. If you don't see a C, the default is zero. If you don't see a D, the default is zero. So that's why these are going to be zeros because there's no D up here and there's no C. Okay. But so I just wanted to talk about this right here. So these are the only things you had to input because these guys are zero. There's no reflection because your A is positive. Okay. But if it was negative, you would just select reflect and it there's the reflection. Okay. Since that is it, you just hit the X button and it goes away and you can check your answer. Or if you don't like working with this over here, you can always click to enlarge graph. This is why I like working out in the actual my math lab, because if you clicked enlarge graph in canvas, it actually makes the screen smaller. And again, out here, you got the same tools, select which one you're doing. Then you just click out on the graph. Okay. And it opens up the information for you. Okay, and then all you got to do is say save and then check answer. Oh, we did it right. Okay, so in my math lab, it makes it a whole heck of a lot easier because you're not really going to be doing these things by hand like what we did. Although if you know what it looks like by hand, it should verify that on the graph. All you're doing in my math lab is either selecting from multiple choice or you're putting in the A, the B, the C, the D information. Okay, and that is is 9.3. I know that's a lot, um, but 9.4 is going to be a lot like this. We're going to be working with A, B, C's, and D's. All we're going to do is just change the picture. That's it. That's 9.4. Okay? So I say good luck to you. Have fun. You guys got this. You can do it. That's 9.3. Signs and cosine graphics.